every project you do, every project, clean energy project you're working on, is the kind of project that influences people around you to change. This is the kind of domino effect that our work has. So as a filmmaker, I was very pleased to be able to profile Elon. And one example of his risk taking just with us as a film crew, he led us into Tesla Motors on some of their darkest days to film behind the scenes with them against the advice of almost every business person around. So with this, uh, Elon's become a very good friend. I'm so happy for his success and for all the lives and minds he's changing around the world. Without further ado, uh, Elon Musk. All right, well, uh, thank you for having me here. Um, so I, I, I guess I was, I was basically asked to speak for about, fi about 15 minutes or so. Uh, hopefully you could hear me okay. Um, sounds a little odd from where I'm standing, but. <laughs> um, so I, just, I was just asked to talk about my views on sustainable energy. Um, and um, maybe I'll, I'll start off uh, with just saying um, maybe some obvious stuff about uh, why I think it's important. Um, <clears throat> and, um, I, and I think this is something that is uh, really almost tautological. We must have sustainable energy, both production and consumption, or um, we will face massive economic collapse. So, so that is a problem we know we must solve, one way or another. Um, the challenge we face uh, right now is, uh, um, th th this will occur no matter what, but the problem is that we, we have this we have these low-cost uh, stored hydrocarbons in, in the ground that have accumulated over hundreds of millions of years, perhaps in some cases uh, over billions of years in the case of methane. So uh, that is, uh, that's a problem because we're, we're, we're taking um, trillions of tons of carbon dioxide that was buried deep in the Earth's crust and putting it in the atmosphere. Um, and, and then some of that migrates into the oceans and causes acidification. So we're essentially running this massive chemical experiment um, on the oceans and atmosphere. And the reason I think that's incredibly dumb um, is, is, is because we know we're going to run out of that stuff anyway and have to find an alternative. So why are we running this massive chemical experiment on our oceans and atmosphere when we know we have to find an alternative anyway? Um, it's the stupidest thing I could possibly imagine. Um, <laughs> And, and yeah, and, and I don't think that logic is as a function of somebody's party affiliation or ideology. Um, it's just a function of rationality. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it sort of feels a bit like we're like that. If you've seen those delayed gratification experiments with the, you know, the kids got the, you can, have one, you can have two cupcakes if you wait five minutes, or you can have one cupcake if you eat it now. <laughs> and then, and that's actually quite a good predictor of the, of the kids' future success. Okay, <laughs> we're the kid who just who scarfs the cupcake in three seconds. <laughs> We're like, but you could have to get about two. Um, anyway, that's that's the the sort of silly situation we find ourselves in. Um, and uh, uh, so, so I think so. so what what I've tried to do um, is is to try to be helpful in accelerating the transition to sustainable energy. Um, on the production side with, with solar power, um, I, feel, I feel strongly that solar power will be the single largest source of sustainable energy um, uh, in terms of, of, of power, uh, uh, power production that humans consume. It's actually worth noting that, that the Earth is, is, actually, is almost entirely solar powered already. Um, we would be a tiny frozen ice ball <laughs> um, at about, three or four degrees above absolute zero if it wasn't for the sun. The sun powers our entire system of, of, precip of precipitation. Um, it's, uh, it's the basis for the whole ecosystem. You know, as we've learned in elementary school, you know, the sun powers the plants and the plankton that, and the animals eat that and we eat the animals and the plants. Um, and so the, uh, the, the ecosystem of Earth, the, the life forms of Earth are, are almost entirely solar powered already. Um, so we're really talking about taking a little portion of that energy, converting it to electricity for use in um, human um, economic activity. And that's, that's what, what it amounts to. So um, 
and, and what a lot of people don't, perhaps don't realize is that if you took just a, a relatively small section of the United States, um, something, of, say, 100 miles by 100 miles, I mean, you could take sort of a little a corner of Utah or, or Nevada or something like that, and if you, if you, if you blanketed that with um, uh, commercial grade efficiency solar panels on the order of 20% efficiency, you would actually generate the, all the power needed by the entire country. So, and this is simple math. Uh, you can go and do the back of the envelope math, and you'll see this. This is this is very easily correct. Um, so, uh, it, given that in, it's obvious we, we need to go make a lot of solar powers, solar panels, and get them installed, it's also helpful um, in that you can put solar power panels at point of use. So you can put them on the roof of a business or a home, and directly power the home during its, the period when it, it needs the most electricity, which is typically during a summer when the air conditioning is running. Um, at, at, at full strength, so it, it tends to match quite well to um, to, to energy usage, and and then um, but now, now long term we, we need to pair that with energy storage in order to have 24-hour day uh, power. So having low-cost uh, batteries uh, for um, for grid storage is is going to be important as well. Um, and I'm, I'm I was very happy to we were very happy to announce recently a deal between SolarCity and, and Walmart where we're going to do um, solar panels and batteries uh, installations in 90 Walmarts around the country. So. And, and, and this is actually a pretty sensible economic decision um, because um, if, if, if they were to lose even one day of power, um, we, uh, all the, the, co the cold produce would rot, so they'd, use a, they'd lose a ton of inventory and they wouldn't be able to sell any goods that day. Um, so even just being able to protect against power outages um, for, for occasional power outages for a day or two actually uh, can pay for the entire system. It, it's, it's really quite compelling. Um, so th there's going to be, a, a lot, hopefully, a lot more of that in the future. Um, and I'm, I'm really quite optimistic. Um, I, I don't want to suggest complacency in any way. I think we, um, you know, we really need to, to make sure that we're um, providing um, a, as much, uh, well, maybe, you know, people often say, well, what about subsidies for solar? And it's like, okay, look, how about if we just made the subsidies for oil and gas and solar the same? It, it, that seems like a reasonable thing. Um, you know? It's, uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, sort of like cigarettes or alcohol or something like that. I mean, you should at least tax stuff the same or subsidize it the same. Ideally, you should, you should tax the things that are bad for you more than the things that are good for you. That sort of seems like it would be common sense. Um, hopefully that doesn't sound crazy. Um, although we, it, it, it is amazing how much opposition one gets to, 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 to these things. Um, and, and, and it's tough. I mean, one can't expect the oil and gas industry to, to you know, that. that it's 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 a t uh, yeah it's <laughs> they, they have a huge amount of money and it's tempting for them to spend a, a bunch of that on preserving and maximizing their you know profit and whatnot but it's I don't know it's sort of vexing um, and so so that's on the power generation side and um, so so solar city is working as hard as possible to try to scale up solar power make it uh, more and more affordable. Uh, have the economics be sensible, um, uh, but, but, but it sure is tough when you've got uh, the ability to pull natural gas out of the ground at next to nothing. Um, but, but no, so it's, it's, a pretty hard, it's a pretty hard bar to, to, to cross, but, but nonetheless, we, we're going to give it our best shot there. And, uh, and, and, and they're doing an awesome job at, at Solar City. And then uh, at, at Tesla, I think, you know, given that we have to make uh, electricity production sustainable anyway, it seems to me to make sense that we should therefore focus in terms of sustainable con consumption of energy on electric vehicles. And, and, and the real, the, the, the trick with electric vehicles is we've got to make um, electric cars that are more compelling as products than gasoline cars. This is really critical for uh, mass adoption of, of electric cars because if you try to tell people, hey, um, buy this electric car, it's ugly, it's slow, it's got lower range, and it just sucks, but buy it, you know, because it's, you're doing the right thing. <sighs> I mean, that's, 
there's some number of people that will be cool with that. <laughs> but, but, but most people are going to have a hard time. Uh, so, so, that, so what Tesla is really trying to do um, is, is to create an electric car that is better than any gasoline car. That even if you don't, leaving aside the, the fact that electricity is far cheaper than, than gasoline and it's good for the environment, if we can just make the car a better product than a gasoline car of, 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 this, of, of approximately the same price, then then you don't have to make the, the, the environmental argument um, and you can get um, a, a much broader set of people that, that, that are willing to buy the car. So that, that's been our goal with, with, with Tesla. And I think with the Model S, we've, we've got a car that is, that is um, I, I think, I mean, um, I, th I think we've, we've achieved that with Model S. Um, obviously the customers, the market will decide that, that question. Um, but we've tried to create something that is, you know, when you look at it, the, the key elements of aesthetics, performance, fit and finish, uh, functionality, you know, things like cargo capacity, um, range, uh, the electronics and entertainment system, um, and, and, and then the way that all of that's been integrated into uh, the, the product as a whole, um, I, I think we've, you know, I think we've been able to create something there which, which uh, hopefully people will prefer to buy over a comparably priced premium sedan. Um, and we've just started production, and the, the challenge that Tesla faces over the next several months, which is a, it's a very difficult one, is, is to scale up production um, and to be able to, to uh, achieve enough of sort of a, a gross margin on, on the product that we can, achieve, we can get to uh, a, a situation of being cash flow positive, which is extremely important. If we aren't able to do that, we will simply join the graveyard of all the other car company startups over the last 90 years. Um, so it, it's, it's definitely going to be a, a pretty tough period over the next six months. Um, and uh, you know, we, our execution, we, we, we can't afford to make a lot of mistakes. Um, but but if, we, if, we, if we don't make too many mistakes, then we'll, we'll get through that period um, and then um, be able to bring out uh, uh, larger volume cars that are more affordable. Our third generation car uh, is, is going to be a $30,000 car uh, that, that uh, will be produced at an uh, order of magnitude greater volume. So we'll, we'll hopefully be making a couple hundred thousand units um, and, uh, and we'll be able to achieve the, the cost savings because it'll be out the third major optimi design optimization and an order of magnitude greater volume and the car will be a little, little lighter, probably 20, 20, 25 cent lighter than, than the Model S. Uh, so I think um, I feel pretty good we can get there as long as we get through the next sort of several months of, of, of trickiness. Um, so that, that's what we're doing there. And, and then um, we're also providing powertrains to Mercedes and to Toyota uh, in their cars, the, the electric RAV4, the new electric RAV4, where Tesla's providing electric powertrain that just went on the roads. So we're trying to provide our, our technology to other car companies to um, accelerate the, um, the advent of electric cars. And uh, um, that, that seems to be well received. So, um, and then uh, as Chris was saying, uh, by showing that you can make an electric car, which is, um, you know, like, like, like we did with the Roadster, we, we showed you can make a car, an electric car that's good looking, fast, long range, um, but that, that sort of spurs other car makers into, in, into making them as well. So we can kind of show that, that, that um, that it's technologically possible and if you do it, the people will, will buy the product. Um, so I think even if, in the end, if, if Tesla doesn't make it, I hope we have uh, nonetheless serve that purpose. Um, I don't want to sound dour, <laughs> but, but, uh, but it's, it's definitely gonna be a tough six months and, and, uh, and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll see where things stand. Um, so I think, I think that's, uh, I'm, I'm nearing the end of my time, so uh, thank you for listening. Uh, it's been a pleasure being here.